Welcome to Physics with Mr. Drew, the channel that will ensure you get top marks in GCSE Physics. In today's video, I want us to have a look at a topic that a lot of students struggle with. I want to answer the question, what is voltage? Remember, the whole point of any electrical circuit is to move energy from one place to another. So in this case here, the energy is stored inside the cell, the battery, and the energy has to make its way to the light bulb where it will be converted into light and heat. In the last video, we mentioned that an electric current was a flow of charge. So we could imagine that the charge in this circuit, the negative charge, the electrons, are flowing around like this. As soon as we turn on this circuit, the charge is flowing around. Well, the charge carries the energy. It's the charge that carries the energy from the cell all the way to the bulb. Then the charge moves back again, and when it comes back to the cell, it picks up more energy, moves it around the circuit, delivers it to the bulb, comes back again to collect more energy, and so on. And that's where voltage comes in. Voltage simply refers to how much energy the charge carries when it's moving in an electrical circuit. So voltage is connected to the energy. It's not the rate of flow of charge, that's electric current, it's about how much energy the charge carries. The equation for voltage is given as this. The voltage is energy divided by charge. So it's the amount of energy that was moved around the circuit divided by the amount of charge that carried it. Now we know that energy is measured in units called joules. We know that charge is measured in units called coulombs. That means voltage is measured in units called joules per coulomb. Over time though, people have abbreviated a joule per coulomb and they've called it a volt. So one volt simply equals one joule per coulomb. So it's actually an abbreviation. If you wanted to write that in algebra, you would write it like this. You would say voltage, you can give that the symbol V, equals energy divided by Q, where Q equals charge. Some people write it like this as well. They will say V equals W over Q. Well, uh, it means exactly the same thing. If E stands for energy here, remember another name for energy transferred is work or work done. So sometimes people write W instead of E. It's important to remember that energy can be put into a circuit, for example by a battery or a cell, but energy can also be taken out of a circuit, for example by a light bulb. When energy is put into a circuit, the voltage then, the joules that are going in for every coulomb of charge, that's now referred to as EMF. EMF used to stand for electromotive force, but most people just refer to it as EMF. So remember, EMF is the voltage, the joules per coulomb, going into a circuit, possibly from a battery. When we're referring to energy being taken out of a circuit, we give it a different name. We call the energy that's taken out of a circuit, the joules per coulomb, that leave a circuit, maybe through a light bulb, for example, getting converted into light and heat, we call those joules per coulomb potential difference. So remember there are two types of voltage. The voltage going into a circuit is called EMF. The voltage leaving a circuit is called potential difference, often referred to as PD. And they are both measured in the same units, volts. Imagine this circuit. Let's just say that on the battery, on the cell, it tells us that it's three volts. What that really means is that the EMF, the voltage going into the cell, is three volts. So that means then that the potential difference in other words, the voltage leaving the circuit must also be 3 volts. Whatever energy goes in, however many joules per coulomb go in, that means the same number of joules per coulomb must come out. So every circuit works like this. So always remember that the EMF going into the circuit is always equal to the potential difference that leaves the circuit. What if we have a circuit that's a little more complicated? For example, this one here, where we've got two light bulbs instead of one light bulb. Well, the rule still applies. So whatever the EMF is that goes into the circuit, that must equal the potential difference that goes out of the circuit. So again, let's say that the EMF of this cell 
is equal to 3 volts. So that's the number that it says on the side of, of the cell. That means we're getting 3 joules for every coulomb. Well, we know that the total potential difference leaving the circuit must also be 3 volts. Now imagine if we measure the potential difference leaving this light bulb here, and it says 2 volts, we would automatically know that the potential difference across this was 1 volt. If we've got 3 volts going in, we must have 3 volts coming out. So the same rule applies. Now, don't worry too much about why this one got 2 volts and why this one only got 1 volt. That's connected to the resistance of the bulbs, and we'll get to that um, in a later video. But for now, I really need you to understand that EMF in equals potential difference out. And that's it for the video on voltage. So hopefully you've got an understanding of the basic ideas there and the difference between EMF and potential difference. Please do check out all the other videos and also do subscribe to Physics with Mr. Drew.